because the RJC swings the clock. It's 33 percent utilized. There will be night courts. We just came out of war. Another 400 million dollar courthouse. I mean, he's going to do that. Oh, he came and he said something, and I was talking with him, and I don't know where. <laughs> Is he out there? Could you just check and see if he's out there? I prefaced it with the fact that the most outstanding male hero in the history of American film was Atticus Finch of Harper's Collins, to kill Hawkingbird. I said, well, oh, I wanted to say good things about lawyers before I tell you what they all know. Fitch. Yes, he was. And Gregory Peck made him look more like Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And it was unfortunately very real history. I didn't know if you said something to me and I didn't hear it when you left, so I. Okay. You know what? I, How you doing, Chris? Good. How are you? Good. I can read upside down pretty well. Can you? I don't know what that means. That means Is you're, my you're mind very upside smart. Down? No, that means you're very smart. I don't know. Um, probably not small print, however. Councilman Barlow. Are we ready As to go? I got my truck here today. I realized you were probably going to be here. And so instead of trying to catch you at lunch tomorrow, so if you have a couple of minutes after recommending me, are we ready? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I'll call this recommending committee meeting of September 18th to order. Are we in compliance with the open meeting law? Yes, we are. This meeting has been posted in various locations throughout the city. Reading the item first to be considered, bill number 2007-52, annexation number ANX21429, Property location at 6369 Buckaroo Avenue. <laughs> Petition by Jose and Aurelia Mraz, acreage 0.53 acres, zoned RE County Zoning, RE City Equivalent, sponsored by our esteemed colleague, Councilman Ricky Y. Barlow. That is I. This uh, annexation is a standard uh, owner requested annexation single parcel. Everything's in order with my approval. Uh, do we have any comments from the audience concerning this item? Okay, would you like to make a motion, Mr. Barlow? I do have a question, um, and I'll pose it to yourself as well as Chris. What is it that we can do to see if, in fact, we can annex county parcels into the city? Because I have a large portion of County Islands um, in War Five. I just wanted to see what what can we do to get that annexed and to make it one cohesive um, war. I don't know if Val wants to start on this or if he wants me to mess it up and then he clean it up. But uh, there are there are state statutes that allow for the city. Uh, we several years ago got an amendment to the state statutes that allowed the city to annex county properties if we met certain circumstances. Now there's two different schools of thought. There's a school of thought that that was a one-time shot 
and we did do that. We annexed uh, properties that did not have single-family homes on them, and uh, that that was done. Uh, there's a philosophy that maybe we should be able to do that again. I don't know if the, the language of the of the state statutes really allow that or not. It's something we we definitely can take a look at. The other question is is what happens when the city, uh, if the city were able to do that, uh, we've had our finance director take a look at, at some of the, uh, the the potential to annex uh, county island properties uh, that meet the requirements under state law, under state annexation, and what happens to uh, the valuation thing in, in light of the uh, property tax cap. And I think it, since I'm not the finance director and I don't know the full thing, but we can uh, have the finance director talk to you about that and, and what those impacts are in, in relation to property values and, and the taxes and what happens to a property owner. And then most basic of all, and, and it plays in every annexation, uh, it is difficult for the city to annex uh, a person's property without their permission. And uh, there is language in the, in the state statutes that says that if there's a certain percentage of the property owners uh, that, try, that are being annexed, if they object to that annexation, uh, it, it basically has a veto authority over the council's ability to annex the property. So that's that's the best that I understand it in just general terms. And maybe Mr. Steed has a, Could a I better just explanation ask if, of that. If, if there are people in the county who live in a cluster together in a county island who wish to be annexed, they can proceed with that, though, can't yes, they? Nothing they can stops that. Nothing it's stops just what you're talking owner. about is if we wanted to do it without and a property owner doesn't want it. Okay. And they have certain rights under state statutes that can prohibit that. And you know, I would really like to see have that in writing uh, from the finance department, Ricky, uh, that would tell us, you know, what it would do to taxes. I have an area in my ward that wants to annex, but they feel their taxes would go up so high. So I'd really like to see what is the situation. Yeah. Okay. Would it be possible for me to say something here, or do I have the next one? Uh, no, uh, could you just wait until we sure. have this and then we'll Absolutely. have you. Is it going to relate to the next one too? Yes. Okay. That's, okay. That's all right. It, no, go ahead. Was there, were uh, you going to say something? Well, I, I, this is, well, I said at the Las Vegas Convention, is there an authority that it like it? There's no such thing as a coincidence. Uh, as it happens, I noticed these two bills on the annexation. They're the first time in my experience at the recommending committee. I took the attack of going to the county clerk's office. I didn't think of finance. And the county clerk advised me that these are on a case-for-case basis. The first and the most common is the island uh, problem. And the second, as you mentioned, uh, the most common based upon the discretion of the owner were, was the idea that they were Clark County, they wanted to be annexed city of Las Vegas because of rateables and taxes. So that's all I have. See that last part again? The last part was, according to the county clerk, uh, that there are others on a case-by-case -case basis who are not in island situations that choose to eschew the Clark County jurisdiction uh, to be annexed by the city of Las Vegas for the reason of their tax abatement for the rateables. Who's tax abatement in it? The owners. Because they feel the county is better or the city. That's where I got lost. Well, again, if they would say the way it was explained to me, it could be that I'm a Clark County person that, that would go uh, for annexation to a city of Las, by a city of Las Vegas to diminish taxes or maybe the other way around. I, I heard it was the other way around. Okay. That's why I was questioning that. Right. I'm sorry. The, the is there, did you want to ask anything more, Ricky? No, that was it. Was there anybody in the audience who would like to uh, make a comment pertaining to this item? Can we have the motion? Okay. I would like to move for due pass of this item. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes. And we move to the next item, Bill number 2007-53, annexation number ANX 22188, property location on the south side of Roberta Avenue, approximately 270 feet, 5 feet west of Decatur Boulevard, petitioned by Brent and Diane Bullock, acreage 1.56 acres, zoned RE, county zoning, 
R-E-N-U-R, City Equivalents, sponsored by Councilman Ricky Y. Barlow. That is I. This is a uh, similar presentation. The uh, owners uh, have two parcels here that they're combining for purposes of the annexation. Do we have any questions? Did you want to make a comment, Ricky, on this one? No. Councilman Barber. No. And um, is there anybody from the audience who wishes to make a comment? Uh, I understand this entirely I recommend approval. You recommend approval? Good. I will ask for a motion from this Councilman Barlow. Okay. I would like to move forward to pass. All in favor? Aye. The motion passes. Moving to the next item, Bill Number 2007-54, it updates various use and design standards within the Downtown Centennial Plan, sponsored by Councilman Gary Reese. Fourth bag with the Planning and Development Department. The proposed ordinance that you have in front of you will make some changes to our Downtown Centennial Plan, which are rather minor in nature, but let me just go through those very briefly. Number one, it will add two uses to the Arts District. These proposed uses have been approved by the Arts District Neighborhood Association, and they are in favor of those. The ordinance will also make some minor changes to our street strip standards relative to tree grades, and then also the varieties of shade trees that are allowable. And then finally, it does two things relative to sidewalk standards. Number one, it requires uh, some additional setbacks along the bus traffic transit route that's planned throughout the downtown area. And then finally, it revises the sidewalk standards in our industrial areas. Previously, we had required a full 10-foot wide sidewalk, and that really isn't necessary in the industrial areas. And so those are the changes that are proposed with this ordinance. Thank you. Do we have any uh, comments? Yes, I do. Is this in relation to the REI site as to why we're moving forward with um, this particular ordinance? No, this was actually drafted prior to REI coming into the city. But uh, this does fall within their jurisdiction as far as the boundary in which they are proposing their development? They won't be in the Arts District, so the changes to the Arts District will not apply to them. Um, Part of the REI site was previously zoned um, industrial. <laughs> and with their applications, they changed that to commercial. So the change in the sidewalk standards, reducing the sidewalk width, will not apply to them either. So I don't see that it will have any impact to the REI site. Okay. Or any benefit. Any more comments or any comments from the audience? Pertaining Do we have any additional comments? Uh, motion, Mr. Councilman? Yes, I would like to move for due pass. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion <coughs> passes. Moving to the next item, Bill Number Z, 2007-1, amends the city's official zoning map atlas by changing the zoning designations of certain parcels of land, non-residential, proposed by M. Margot Wheeler, Director of Planning and Development. I would like to comment that the rezoning of these parcels has already been approved by the City Council. This bill merely formalizes the rezoning by ordinance. Do we have any uh, comments we made? Uh, yes, this is a standard thing that we do once a year to uh, take all the parcels uh, that are non-residential. We divide them into residential and non-residential just kind of for convenience purposes. Uh, take those that have uh, that have had conditions that have been fulfilled and a legal description of which has been uh, prepared and uh, make the uh, zoning official, even though it's kind of housekeeping because they're out there exercising their zoning um, anyway. So uh, with that recommended approval, I do believe we have a request to uh, add three parcels to, to the uh, uh, ordinance, which would be by First Amendment. 
Poole and Parcadian. Um, Lenny Scar, 3753 Howard Hughes Parkway, um, representing three parcels which I would like to have added onto this ordinance. Um, they are in the vicinity of Cliff Shadows and No Bat. Um, these parcels have a certificates of occupancy and businesses inside open for business in December of last year. They have completed all of their off-site improvements and all the other conditions of approval that were placed on the development. And those three parcel numbers are 13712410007 and also 008 and 010. So for clar clarification, these parcels are in place and operating with the current zoning use. However, the zoning that they currently sit on is inappropriate. And so they this is to clean up their zoning? The, uh, the list that you have shows what they were when they asked for you to rezone them. We call them current zoning. Correct. And we call them new zoning is what you gave them subject to a resolution of intent. And in almost all, if not all cases, they're out there exercising that zoning under the new resol resolution of intent. It just has to be formalized by what we call hard zoning, and that's what this ordinance does. Okay. So this is um, uh, yes, and I believe uh, I believe the parcels that uh, Lenny was referring to are all. Uh, current zoning UPCD going to PD. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. So we would uh, just add those onto the list. We did also notice uh, an, an error in uh, a couple of parcels on page four where it says U parentheses PR OS. Uh, there's a closed print missing and a hyphen. So we'll, as long as we're amending this uh, in the First Amendment, we'll, we'll clean those up. So, uh, and, and, and those parts, it's my understanding, were supposed to have been included here, so we, we have no objection to adding them by amendment. So, <coughs> the parcels which he's talking about, you have no objection to, it fits right in with what we're doing. Exactly. And uh, you will make the corrections on page four as a second amendment. They, we or all part, of part of the first, first. okay. Then and they'll be uh, part of the first. And because we don't have that printed for you, we will uh, make the same presentation tomorrow at council fast track and is eligible for adoption tomorrow. Okay. As long as we have no problems then, um, is there any other comment from anybody in the audience? Mr. Councilman? Yes, move for due pass subject to all staff conditions. And the amendments? With the first amendment. With the first amendment. The first amendments. amendment. <laughs> we put it all in one, I guess. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the motion passes. We move to the next item. Bill number Z2007-2 amends the city's official zoning map atlas by changing the zoning designations of certain parcels of land residential. Proposed by M. Margo Wheeler, Director of Planning and Development. Again, I note that the rezoning of these parcels has already been approved by the City Council. This bill merely formalizes the rezoning by ordinance. As we've been told here today, uh, that this is mainly a housekeeping issue. Correct. Uh, this is, uh, these are the residential parcels. There's quite a few more of them, as you might imagine. Uh, everything is in order. As far as I know, there are no amendments and no typographical, typographical errors, and so we ask for your approval. Okay. Any comments from the audience? The previous uh, vote we made was on, on non-residential, and this one is on residential. Mr. Councilman? Yes, move for due pass. All in favor? Aye. And now I ask if there's anybody in the audience who would like to make a comment or a suggestion or anything you would like to do within reason and the public input. First of all, off the record. Could you come to a mic, please? Oh, yeah, that was my question. Everything's on the record. 
The question. Identify was, yourself, please. My name is Ted Russell, resident of Las Vegas. Which is to say, I understand that, thank God, there's already no cameras for change. But I understand that one speaks into this microphone for the purposes of the system. Does that mean that everything I said over there would not be entered? The it, it, been, it picks I'm, it up, but more quietly. I'm theatrically trained, and I know how to throw my voice. Yes. Great. Uh, now, uh, at the county commissioner's meeting today, uh, Commissioner Chris G. Just, G. Thank you. I mean, I speak Italian, and I, I still. Uh, the uh, suggestion was to include, you're not going to like this, but the suggestion was, and it was adopted, uh, they have a book that's about this thick that prepares the commissioners for the meeting. Uh, the commissioner suggested that there be a book placed at the entry to the chambers for the benefit of any residents or any business people or whoever wanted to, let's say, get the straight scoop or to look more deeply into matters that influence their friends, family, finances, etc., etc. Uh, so my suggestion, and I realize that normally I think you all have three books in preparation for... Sometimes eight. Maybe I should rethink it. Or well, what do you, uh, I, I wonder if maybe we could ask um, uh, Mr. Knight to administratively look into this and see if there would be a possibility to place a set of books that have all the backup. It would just be an additional set of the books that would be available and see what the feeling is as far as staff is concerned and council members. We can look into that in, in terms of cost and, and our ability to do that and uh, I'll take that forward to the city managers and ask them to have the clerks look into that and see what, what the implications are. This would not be a vote of council, it would be more city manager making an administrative deci decision, so he'll take it there and see what the feeling is. Uh, my idea on this is I'm very difficult. I'm only satisfied with anything we do as being a model for the rest of the nation. I'm not alone that. And to me, it would be truly fulfilling both the spirit and the letter of the Nevada Revised Statutes Open Meeting Law. I understand. I, I, I would say, Councilwoman Tarkania, for the, for the record, that uh, uh, just about any council agenda item, if an individual is interested in the backup for that, that is a public record and they can request that and receive that from the city clerk's office. Uh, also, if you go to the city's website, you can pull the backup information off yes, of the website can. as well. So it is available. So yes, it's, you know, it's it not that it's not available. It, it's not it. that it's not available. It is available right. by going onto the site. And those conditions are precisely duplicated by the county, yet nonetheless they decided in their wisdom to go ahead. There are some people who don't use email or right. you oh, know, yes. in or the, the computer. Or maybe at the last minute realized, oh my god, I forgot. And there are some people who don't realize that about how they can obtain the backup information, and that might be why the county does that. I know that two or three times we have had people come before the council who have stated, well, you know, I don't have this, or it's not there. Sometimes it's the same person to take the truth, but in any case, if it were there, it would be available. And I, But you have to balance the costs and the, the advantages. We'll take a look at the, all the logistics of that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Is there anybody else uh, who wants to make a comment to participate in public uh, input? All right, then the meeting's adjourned.